Well, they're a side that's been out of the Premier League for 23 years. You don't just buy that knowledge with £150 million of acquisitions just because your owner says you do. I mean, Fulham, if you look at the opposition, Fulham made a haulix of it two or three years ago where they went up and spent something comparable, brought in a boatload of players, they didn't fit, they didn't gel, and they went down with a whimper. They've come back this time round with a far different perspective. Obviously, they've had an inter- uh, uh, another scenario in the middle of that where they up and down again. And they are a far more compelling proposition. Nottingham Forest, Steve Cooper, is should not be you know, under any real threat because you have to be realistic about what you may want and what you get may be two different things. The challenge for me is the rationale, the logic, the emotivity of spending £150 million pounds will take away the gratitude you might have for the guy that took you out of this 23-year dip of being outside of the Premier League and forget that it was someone that took what other managers couldn't do for 23 years and brought you up. Now, Steve Cooper doesn't deserve currency forever, but he certainly deserves a certain amount of time, and that means a significant amount of time. And I would suggest it means, unless there's an absolute wheels coming off, the preparedness to accept relegation to come back up again with this manager. Because I don't think that Steve Cooper is doing too much wrong. Accept relegation after 150 million. Well, no spent. one wants to accept anything along those lines, but you have to be realistic about things. You don't plan to do that. The manager didn't ask him to spend 150 Maranakis million. Isn't going to accept well, this that. is the challenge. This is the point. Is I think that Maranakis won't accept that. I think Maranakis will m- remove himself from the exuberance of the playoff win. And he made a statement to you, which I thought was slightly unwise at the time, which is about what he wanted to achieve. Mm. We all get caught up in emotion. Best thing to do is probably not do an interview as an owner directly after a playoff final win because you're going to open your mouth and say things that you might live to regret. But spending the money, one thing you can't do is argue that the owner's prepared to back him. The flip side of that is to bring 21 players, and I don't like to give managers too much latitude, but to bring 21 players into a, into a structure because you haven't had the organisation previously to be able to have a settled playing squad that doesn't need to have that amount of players brought in is not an ideal scenario. So I think that with Forrest, Cooper, and the irony of it is he's pledged his loyalty, done something that very few managers do, which is be unequivocal. I'm not interested in Brighton. Forget me for Brighton. I'm a Nottingham Forest manager, which was lovely to hear from a manager rather than say, I'm the manager of this football team until someone tells me something different. Um, And I think that he may well find himself being rewarded in a different way for that. Because if Forest continue not to win games and to play the way that they're playing, then then I think Maronekas will make a change. But Mm. I think he'd be foolish to do so. I mean, this is a fatty individual at the top of the house. Yeah, he, Evangelist he, he owns, uh, Olympiacos, Olympiacos as well. Olympiacos, yeah. I mean, Shipping magnet. If you go back without knowing the facts, but I would, I would, I'm sure that um, results like this for any Olympiacos manager meant you were down the road pretty quickly. You were sacked. Mm. Um, I've, I find, I find it really. It's not about spending 150 million quid. It's about how you spend it. It's how you spend. Uh-huh. You know. And I think they've gone for a quantity over quality. I think when you look at, tw- is it 21 players I brought in? Yeah. I mean, who, <laughs> you just can't buy 21 players in one in one window. I mean. How do you accommodate them? Well, well it's not just that. Well, where's, what are you basing your, your thoughts on? Have, have they been properly scouted? People done their homework on them? All 21 of them. The majority of them ain't, ain't going to be players for Nottingham Forest. How I many I mean, did you bring in at Palace at any one time? Uh, a few. I mean, we went to the Premier League, I think we bought 11 or 12 in. But the, at one time? Uh, yeah, because that's what you end up having to do when you get promoted it, to the Premier I, League. But I think I think Graham, one of the key components is that he's staying faithful to the central defenders that he brought in from that were in a championship. Well, can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I make a... You know, we're talking about You're this. right, McKenna I'm and think, Waddle. I'm thinking a year ago. Like, a year ago, they're bottom of the championship. Yeah. Mm. You've not said to your scouting department or your recruitment department, whatever they're called today, recruitment committee, you've not said to them a year ago, um, guys, get out and look for X, Y, and Z. These are the players we want for next summer. So when did they start looking for these these 21 players to bring in? You know, you know, you know the point I'm trying to make? Mm-hmm. Where you're, you're in a very different scenario a year ago to where sure, you are sure. right now. So at what point did they say... To the recruitment team, get out, we're going to have a real splurge, we're going to spend a lot of money, I want 20 players. Well, it depends so, upon the owner's view, because this guy has made it clear to people that his expectation of Nottingham Forest was to get them out of the championship. So if his expectation was to get you out of the championship, then part of his brief to the people that were working for him is have a rounded recruitment network that is looking at all aspects of our development, from the future to the interim to the medium term. So if you're doing it properly, 
then you'd be looking at players that can cap- are capable of getting you out of a championship and may also be capable of competing in the Premier League. So you should have a rounded scouting network that, that gives you the riches of, of a feast and perhaps the impoverishedness of a famine by staying in the championship. They did the first part right, although a lot of them were loanees, weren't they? A lot of them were on loan. Yeah. But I come back to I don't... There's nothing wrong if you're a manager and your your boss comes to you and says, we're going to spend £150 million. I think it's a Premier League. It's ultimate. It's, it's yeah. the most demanding league in the world. And, and you're, you're saying cohesion is the most difficult thing. You know, you're, you're going to say, well, don't be bringing me 21 and bring me seven or eight. Yeah, but, but, do, but do you not think he would have said this? I mean, I, I we can still get loanies in. I do struggle, Jim, with the notion that managers are over here detached from the reality of what an owner's doing because the owner's so desperate. I am so desperate to give 150, 40% more than I'm getting from going in the Premier League. I have this burning ambition to unleash 150 million quid. The the the, the manager would be complicit in it, and what's being built is a little ah, bit of a backstory. That's, that's, yeah. we, we, how, how do we know that? Because I can't believe that a manager how much that had that, Steve Cooper had in it. Well. That's a question we can answer. Well, that, okay, that, if, you're, that's if you're the manager, road you're going down right, and you're, yet again, may I say? And you're the, and you're it's the always the, it's always the manager's fault. Well, no, it's not. You have to take responsibility, though. It's not. You know, you can't have success and that be all down to you and what, have some failures and your, be down to everyone else. What would your thoughts be? Who's had the biggest say in what, what players have arrived at the club? Well, I would like to think that it was a, 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 a an equation it's two, between just one or two people. That's all. You only have to say one or two people. Well, I would like to think it's the person that's spending the money and the person that wants the players to to, to be able to supplement the team that he's building. So, I would like to think that the manager is sat there saying, "Well, here's the players I want," and the owner will be saying, "Well, I can't afford that, or I can afford that, and we can do this, and we can do that. We can't have that one, but we can have this one." If the manager goes, "Well, I don't want that," I would like to think that the owner would sit there and go, "Well, I'm not going to give you something you don't want because." I'm not a loon. I'm not the only owner that have sat there so, going, well, I'm not going to give you things that you don't want because, I, quite frankly, I can do without it. So in this case, who do you think had the bigger say? I think they probably had an equal say. And, I, and, I, and you don't think that because it gives one of your little <laughs> mobbing excuse. But I think that ultimately, <laughs> I, I, a manager I so. that's got this amount of juice, a guy that's being held... The only reason Nottingham... For, let's get me clear, right? The only reason hmm. Nottingham Forest got promoted was Steve Cooper. Yeah, no, it wasn't incredible. I, incredible, no, 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 incredible. No, 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 no it wasn't great. It was a, res- a variety of things. It was the owner being prepared to back him, the owner being prepared to appoint him, and the owner giving him results to get out of the champ- at championship. It isn't just the manager. So the manager now goes into the into this equation with all the credits and must have had the juice. And if he didn't have the juice, then he's a lightweight minnow. The, the Premier League has now become like any other league in the world, where you don't perform. Yeah. And it really depends. But more so, it really depends on your chairman. You know, I mean, I think Brendan's. Situation is it's different. totally different yeah. to Steve's situation. I agree. But he's more I stable. Think, I mean, yeah, I, no, he's wiser and more canny. Yeah, yeah but I think yeah. he's, he's, he's cuter. Brendan's mm. far cuter. But I think I think Steve is vulnerable because of his owner and because of the circumstances. You've spent 150 million. You've got 21 players. How can you get a team out of that? That'll be the obvious question. Yeah, but he's what, being asked by his what owner. What is doing? is Graham is doing the fact that this is nothing to do with Steve Cooper. I'm not saying that. And that the 21 players that were brought in, you're either a leader or you're not a leader. Right? Yeah, and if you don't want 21, 21 players enough. to come in, you turn around and say, no, I don't want them. I don't want them. Because, because that's what you do as a leader. And as an owner... You sit there and go, and, and, and I accept the fact that there doesn't seem to be a lot of logic behind this guy. Say, I'm going to spend 150 million quid. I'm going to... I'm going to S and bust, right? I'm going to go after it mm. and I'm going to spend 150 million quid and I don't care what that looks like to the outside world because to me it looks like lunacy. See. What are you going to do in January? Are you going to go again? So are you going to go again in January? Are you going to go for another 50, 60 million quid? Are you going to spend 200 million quid? Championship is all absorbing. It's a, it's a really difficult league to get out of. You're playing Absolutely. every week, two games, three games a week. Steve Cooper would not have had the time or the inclination to start looking about players if we get promoted. He, he, I bet you there's, there's, there's not a handful of players out of those 21 Steve Cooper would put his name to. There you are. That, just a guess, because I'm thinking he's going to be so absorbed, mm. so focused on his previous well, year. You'll be, helpful, the you'll be helpful to his backstory get, then. Get, so get his backstory is finish, his fault. Get him, see, right? You'll be there as a poster boy going, see, I knew it wasn't your fault, he, Steve. He's guilty every show of hammering <laughs> managers. No, making you accountable. Ma- managers are making accountable. You, then making you accountable. The sack. Then I'm getting the sack. And paid. And I, I, I'll for come back to well, Simon, to be fair, it wasn't Steve Cooper who said to Maranakis, uh, you know, Lingard's going to cost 
a heck of a lot more than West Ham are prepared to go. But you've got to go. Maranakis chose to to go in that direction. No, no, hold on. Uh, do you want do you want Jesse Lingard? Yes, is it a statement signing? I wouldn't have had him, quite frankly, because I'm not an admirer and I don't think it's the right thing for Nottingham Forest, right? But then West Ham wanted him. So you've got an opportunity to say to him, you can have Lingard, but it's going to cost me 120 grand a week. Do you want him? If the manager says absolutely not and the owner says, well, absolutely must have him, then that manager, as sure as day follows night, is going to get the sack. Because if that owner, if, if Graham's logic is to be believed, then that owner is going to sack this manager unless he gets precisely what he thinks because next thing he'll want is the formation of a team then he'll want the style of football that's not an owner that's a despot that's somebody that's not looking at a football club and ha- having someone Jim, you, a, a dog Jim, you know as well himself. as I do Jim you know as well as I do what these owners are like the first hint of <laughs> what you're trying to get me on side no, of you but you yes, can't possibly the first hint you of can't pressure possibly know. Mm, we'll have to have the sacrificial lamb mm, who, but gets me, who gets me off the hook here let's get rid of the manager that's, that's Simon's thinking. Because no, the owner really lives on. It's really and not. And the manager will go. Yeah, do you think Long Cooper survives? Do you think Cooper survives in the short term, Graham? Oh, what are we moving up against? That is. I, think, I think he's up against it. Do you think he's up against it, Sam? With the owner. With, with the owner. With the owner. Yeah, 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 I do. Yeah. I think because this owner has been so emotive and laid down such a ridiculous gauntlet, which is I expect this team to win things. I'm coming into. It's one thing saying you want to compete. It's another thing saying. We are going to compete. You have to accept that you you shoot for the for the moon. You take some stars on the way up, and he's given him the tools. Graham would believe, have you believe, that the sacrificial lamb being the manager, which is not the case at all, not at all. You give managers enough rope that they can run with or hang themselves with. It's entirely up to them. Right? They get the choice. They get to they get to run with it or to do the other. Well, I just just eulogise towards. I, I think that the challenge for Steve Cooper is that he's got an owner that doesn't think about the reality of Nottingham Forest going into the Premier League after 23 years and all the lessons that need to be learned and yeah. there might have to be one step back to take two steps forward. Let you me, might have to accept that you're not going to get what you want instantaneously. Well, let's throw it out there because, as I said, after this international break, Leicester are up against Forest. So, Leicester fans, and a lot of you are calling in, do you see Brendan being in the dugout for that one? And, and really, the same question applies for Forest fans. Do you see Cooper being around the technical area for that one? Give us a call, why don't you? Oh, 03717 Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.